camera and we're good. That's it. Right. That's all the clicking that you got to do. Hey, Denny. Hello. Does that mean we're on? It means that we're on, I hope. All right. I forgot to pull up the PowerPoint, though, so that we can have questions up there. Oh, oh sad. Chad can just ask him away, or if he clicks down on the bottom, he can click on PowerPoint and hit Live Questions, and then it'll pull it up, and he can hit F5, and then it'll present on that screen over there. I understand all that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at this. That's cool. That's cool. We made that guitar strap on Wednesday. Chad brought his guitar, and I, I didn't even realize when I told you what I wanted to do out of it that Chad had a red guitar. Oh, he's like, "Oh, I got a red guitar," and I was like, "Well, bring it in. Let's see what happens." Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that matches perfect. Looks pretty good. So, did we give that away, or we had? Yeah. Are we going to? Sure. We're not giving away the guitar. Not the guitar, just the strap. We'll off. sell the guitar. <laughs> Chad doesn't play it. Chad doesn't play it, so we'll just give it away. Yeah. No. We'll give away the guitar strap. So what are we doing today? I don't know. What'd you bring in here to do? Well, we started our, we talked about our craft aids a week or two ago. Yep. And uh, we've got this set of uh, craft aid corners. Here's the original plate that, mm -hmm. that we made for it. It's just got four different corners on it, and it's got a centerpiece that you can use. But to... Uh, uh, we're going to make a, a Roper checkbook style wallet. Okay. Uh, and use a couple of the corners just to show people how they can how they can be used. Plus, you can do some tooling, and we can explain some of that. Are you going to use a bar grinder today? I see you've yes. done that. Uh, yes, I am, but I forgot to put them in. Oh well, I guess that means I'll have why to run you, and go. Why don't you talk for a minute? Oh, you're going to go get them. You're going to get, get the wrong ones. Yes, I'll go get them. I forgot them. I thought I had everything. I'm glad I reminded you then. Me too. You got your leather already wet, it looks like. Yeah, I, I changed it a little bit. So I was running around on retail just a minute ago, and Denny was out front talking with this gentleman. And he looks down at his watch. He's like, I am so sorry. I got to go. I got a video that I need to be in. So that a boy. You know, when we first started doing these videos, when we did the recorder one, Denny was not really a fan of them at all. It's not his personality to be in front of the camera. And then I we came back from the COVID era, and uh, I said, well, I don't really have time to edit videos anymore, so we're going to do live videos. What do you think about that? He's like, I don't like it at all. And here we are, telling customers on the floor that we got to go. We got a live video coming. How is everybody doing? Friday here, last day of the work week. Hope everybody's doing good. Abigail's back. I'm Denny's back. back. Now we got bar covers. We got some white rhino thread. Is that what you wanted? That is what I wanted, yeah. I brought this little pen holder that I made a while back when we did the shaving cream stuff. Uh-huh. And uh, I was going to stitch it up. Cool. Yeah. How wonderful. Well, while, while you do that. Okay. What? Okay, so what I'm going to do is what I had planned is I think I'm going to do this little flower corner here. Yeah, we switch that top on there, Chad? This flower corner I think I'll do. Mm -hmm. This is that dogwood flower. Yep. And which other corner do you think I ought to do? Uh, so you're going to do a corner here and a corner here? Yeah. Okay. I think I'll do... I'm not going to ask you. I think I'll do this one, this small I think, one. I think that'll be good. That way you don't have opposing flowers. Yeah. Yeah, and... Then we'll be fighting with each plus other. Plus, we're under severe time constraints here. Oh, we can go all day if you want. Well, it might take all day. But first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to lightly mark this uh, this border. And I've set this border at... My eyeball says exactly one half of an inch. So I'm just going to lightly mark that. Did you just eyeball it, or how much room did you give yourself there? Exactly a half an inch by my eyeball. Wow. Exactly by my eyeball. Okay, now I've I've set this one flower corner in right in that too. 
that uh, corner that I of the border that I just drew. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take this modeling spoon and I'm going to rub our carve right pattern. Tried to adjust that top camera without being able to see it, so we'll see what it when we go if we go to it. What I zoomed in on. Oh, I got close. Okay, and that's all you got to do with these carve right patterns. You just rub over them with a modeling spoon. <clears throat> Can I move you this way a little bit? Yeah. I know you have to move your chair. I'm going to have to move Chad's guitar. Okay. Now, I don't know. I don't think you can kind of see the detail that I got here. But all that all these carburites do is uh, give you a line that you don't have to trace. All you've got to do is start cutting with your swivel knife. So I'm going to take my swivel knife here, and like I tell everybody, every time I pick it up, I strop it. So I'm going to strop it a little bit. When you strop, and by the way, when you strop a swivel knife, you want to be careful and not wipe it up like that because that rounds your edge over rather than polish it. I'm going to wipe this residue off on my pants. My wife loves me for that. Mm -hmm. Now, first thing I'm going to do is lightly set the flower center. And I'm just using a, a big round. This is actually a domed rivet setter, but I'm going to use it just as to make my flower center round. And, and I'm just going to set it lightly here. You can see what I've just done. And y'all can use any flower center you want on this flower. This is just the one that I picked. So I'm going to start. And yeah, I may need to switch a camera lens on there. I'm going to move your coffee just a little okay, bit. Okay, you go right ahead. See if I can't get a lens switched on a camera so we can see just a little bit better. And with, as with any pattern that you use, you aren't going to be able to follow the lines exactly you come as close as you can but sometimes you see, you see something that you don't care for and you can change it a little bit and I'm pretty bad to do that but I've, I've uh, cut my flower that's generally what I cut first now I'm going to make sure I cut my flower stem in because I don't want to forget that a lot of people lose their flower stem amongst all the lines that they've got but as a, a novice carver, it's hard to decide what features you're, you're actually cutting. You've got your stems, your flowers, your leaves, your leaf stems. Then you've got all your, you've got swirls, you've got swirls, and then you've got your chicken necks and whatever. But if you can figure out what each one of those features are, it makes it a lot easier on your tooling because then you know what you're trying to tool instead of just cutting and beveling a line, you know. Hey Tony, Marcus Workshop just subscribed. Marcus Workshop just subscribed. So, <laughs> on, uh, we're on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube, but on Twitch you can have subscribers, Denny. Chevy Guy, who's the moderator of our Twitch chat room. Subscribe last night, I saw. And what now, does that mean when they subscribe? Well, Twitch plays um, ads on there in just a way that they can give back to us. Maybe Chevy Guy can explain a little bit more. They just do a subscription. They can give subscriptions to other people. And it just lets them be a part of the channel a little bit more. And they get these cool little badges. They get a badge. That, a badge? Wow. Yeah, and they get emotes. So when we're on Twitch and we do the after show and do some extra special things for them, you can go to another streaming channel of somebody that's doing leather craft or doing whatever, and you bring your whole group of people that watch your video, and then you host their channel and get more followers, get other people paying attention to what you got going on. So maybe we can educate more people. Well, I feel like you're educating today. I'm being educated. <laughs> So when you're making these cuts like that, are you doing the same weight on the whole line? 
Uh, depends on the cut. If you're if you're making a cut that ends against another cut, yeah, I will use the same weight. If I'm if I'm doing a cut that ends up uh, like out in the middle of nowhere, like these cuts right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Let's see if I'm pointing to the yeah. right place. Uh, those cut, uh, yeah, that, those two cuts right there. Yeah, both of them. They don't end against another line, so I fade those out. I just I lighten up on those. Lift up just a little bit on yeah. your knife. Yeah, lift lift up a lot where it just glides out to nothing. But there's always exceptions to the rule, like these cuts here don't go up against another cut, but I want them to end in a blunt line. You know, mm -hmm. for the end effect that I'm going for. Just the characteristic of, right. of the leaf itself. Right. But if you'll notice, I did the, the flower and the flower stem, then I did the leaf and the leaf stem. And now all I've got left are all these little chicken necks. They're all just kind of long flowing lines. That's what you call me. Yeah. Chicken neck. Old chicken neck. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to be called that. I know, that's why I was complaining. <laughs> <laughs> but like I say, when you're when you're uh, making these cuts, you aren't going to be perfect, and you might see something that you don't like all that much, and you can change it. I just changed one a minute ago here. And I'm getting ready to change another one. This line right here, I don't like the way that looks, so I'm going to kind of make it a bit different. So you're using this carve right to get you started correctly, and you can change them a little bit. Yeah, well, you can follow the lines exact if if you want to, mm -hmm. and if you're able to, but you don't necessarily have to. Yeah. Chad, we hit three on there. Mm -hmm. uh, Latigo Smith also subscribed. Latigo Smith coming in with a subscription. Welcome to. You as well. I think he was with us on Wednesday when we did a a pre-stream and a post-stream. Al Swan wants to know what chicken neck is. Yeah. Chicken neck is, uh, some people would call it a leaf. Like a stem, like a, a new stem that hasn't leafed out yet, yeah, maybe? Well, it's like a, like a, a leaf on a, a wheat plant. You know, it, it's not really a... Are we talking about like yes, this? Yes, that's a chicken neck right there. It looks like a chicken neck. Or this over here being chicken necks, and then there's a couple yeah. more on. Yeah. This is not a technical term. This is the this is oh, Dennyism. This is very technical. Oh, okay. Very technical. <laughs> is that what most but people this, call them? Yeah, but this is a leaf right here. Mm hmm Right? This is a chicken neck. You know... This is a chicken neck. This is a chicken neck. This one, this one, this is a little flower bud, which I haven't told you about yet. Okay. But that's a chicken neck. There's a leaf, or a flower stem. I was going to say, maybe if, there should be a flower stem in there somewhere. Okay, I've got that one cut. Now let's put the, the other one on that we were going to use. All right. I said I was going to do this, but I may not, I may have to wait until afterwards. Okay, now i I'd place this opposite that uh, first flower set that we did. The first In your other corner. corner. Set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rub it on there. And if this was a big pattern, I'd put my uh, dead weight on here to hold it in place. But so you're I, saying you may put my hand there? Yeah. I can be your dead weight? <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a small piece <laughs> that I'm doing, so I can kind of get by without, without it. What would you bring here? That's a deal. Well, my stamping tools. Oh, I moved it when, off when I'm I when I'm using one and I when I put it down, I'll put it there on my bench. I've got a big block, mm -hmm. and if I just put these tools on it, a lot of them that aren't wide like this, like this, yeah, like this tool, it'll roll off. Or does but, it does it make them dinged up? Can you ding up your tools? Oh, you can. But I, well, probably with those Sergei tools, with them being brass. Yeah. But mostly, I put I just put my tools on there to kind of keep them. Where I can get a hold of them and so, keep them uh, in one spot. Denny Chris yes. Morenci said that he loved Wednesday's video about the guitar strap, and he was wondering if you had ever done a tooled one. Oh yes, I've got that uh, Oakleaf and Akron guitar strap right now. 
Well, I'm over here, not behind the table. Why don't you go run and get it? Good Show suggestion, it. Denny. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Now I've got this pattern transferred, so I'm going to cut it. And here are the two. I've got two main features on this, this little pattern, and they're both leaves. So those are the ones I'm going to cut first. And I guess it's not necessary for you to uh, have a routine, but for me it is, If I, especially if I'm doing a big, really involved pattern. If I don't have a routine and, and do everything the same way every time I forget things and lose track of things. But I'm sure there's a lot of Toolers that would disagree with the way I do things. I know I disagree with the way a lot of people do their things. Leaves cut now. I'm cutting their stems. There, I just floated that little cut out, and I'm going to do the same with this one because I don't want it to look like uh, that was just the end of the world. There, I want it to look like life goes on. Uh, Matt's toasters wanted to know if you use crowners, Denny. Uh, I have. As a general rule, I don't. Uh, it's not really cheating when you use a crowner, but a lot of times a, a crowner isn't exactly the shape that I want or a shape the shape that uh, my pattern's calling for. So, Lori's learning if you prefer undercut beveler or camel your curves. Uh, I use an undershot beveler a lot. And I'm going to be using it. No, I'm not going to be using it on this pattern. I don't have anywhere to use it. But I do use an undershot beveler a lot. Especially on, on a, a set of leaves that have a lot of scallops. You know, I'll always use an undershot on those. Now, I call it an undershot, not an undercut, but it's the same thing. Okay, I've got that pattern cut. Now, that light to borderline that I drew, I'm going to finish it up because part of this pattern goes over the borderline and that's why I didn't cut it first. How's it going over there, Denny? It's going well. I'm about ready to start beveling. He's just chugging along. No. Whoops, we've got a line there. <clears throat> Chucking. Chucking along? I'm chucking along, yeah. <laughs> Abigail. <laughs> I could start making short jokes, you know. <laughs> How much over five foot? <coughs> that is none of your concern. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm going to start to bevel. The first thing I'm going to bevel is, are these border lines. And I'm going to use this is an SB4, but you can use any any steep beveler that you have. And I had already wet this leather. Ideally, myself, I like the leather to, to be a little bit on the dry side when I'm beveling. When it's too wet, uh, it kind of lightens up. Some, some tools that I use, I like to, to have a little more moisture in it. To beveler and a backgrounder or a bar grounder, whatever you use. I like I like the bar grounder to be very dry 
almost on the point of completely dry. I seem to get a crisper pattern out of it. But to everybody says, which beveler do you use? Uh, I use the, the, the biggest beveler that I have as long as I don't leave little tracks behind it. I'm doing a lot of curves and stuff. I'll, I'll switch to a smaller beveler. We'll leave tracks. But a big beveler, you don't necessarily cover a lot more ground with it, but it's easier to keep, a, keep the large beveler on your line. What else leather are you using there, Denny? This is a four to five ounce leather. That's what I generally use on wallet backs. Wallet backs and checkbook covers. Yeah. Otherwise, when you get your interior in there, it makes it kind of thick. Yeah. And also, I already taped this, so you can't really see it, but I taped this with packing tape because this lightweight leather especially will, uh, will want to stretch when you do it. I saw somebody the other day talking about a different type of tape to put on there. 3M had said they're... They had their least stretchiest tape. Maybe it was the brown packing tape. It doesn't, there's still a little bit of stretch in the clear. So people were saying they used the brown because 3M had told them that it was the least stretchiest of their tapes. Well, you know, whatever works for you. If you, if you have a tape that you like better, use it. <laughs> That's about all I can say about it. Okay, now I'm going to put that big beveler up, and I've got two, two smaller sizes. These are both Barry King bevelers, but you can use, we sell a, a PB012 and a PB013, which are both steep bevelers, this same size, you know, and they're, well, they're less expensive than a Barry King, but these Barry Kings are what I use most of the time. So Devin Renfro on um, YouTube is asking, or says, Jim Linnell, you know Jim Linnell. Yep. He uses sandpaper to create his background. You know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. Have you ever done anything unique to create an effect on your leather? I don't know. I figure everything I do is a first time thing. <laughs> so. I don't know. Uh, offhand. Sometimes you take a grinder or some other sandpaper to your tool and redesign them. Oh, yeah, I redesign tools all the time. Me and the grinder are good friends. Yeah. There's that tool rolling away. Yeah. See, that's what that little pad's for. On my bench in the other room, my my, uh, my piece of granite is twice this size, so I can put that up. Check we got two granite itself. Okay, I got that leaf done now. So you did your border, now you moved on to your leaves. This side is just leaves, correct? Or do you have right? I just got two leaves on okay. this, this little part here. Do you kind of stay in the leaf, flower, or tree area, or have you, you carve anything else? Uh, I'm not much of a figure carver. My my thing is uh, this type of floral carving. This Sheridan every, style? It, well, yeah, everybody calls it Sheridan style or Northwest style. I just, it's kind of just contemporary modern style carving, you know. Uh, 
the old uh, fashioned uh, western floral carving was real big and spread out and you used a lot of different tools these these tools that uh, i'm using now are quite a bit more refined than those old style tools i say refined they're just quite a bit different they're made to do different things mm -hmm. you know because there's a lot of people that might take offense to me saying that to old style floral carving is good because it is there are a lot of fine fine jim linnell is one of them he, yeah he's he's more of a traditional uh, floral type carver but uh, he's one of the best in his own right all right now i'm going to do this uh, demo on the sleeve you know that you see what i brought in here see what i found oh yeah that's it i've done that i did that a long time ago i can see part of it got in the sunshine there yeah Yeah, that's. I think that's the same uh, strap pattern as yep, the, I think you're the right. black one that we did the other day. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to sell it? You just hanging on to I it? I would sell it. What you want out of it? That one probably uh, three hundred. Yeah. That's it. Everybody used to. Used to say that oak leaf and acorns, 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 acorns. I'm not kind of oak leaf I'm, and acorns were simple, but they are pretty pretty hard. There's a lot of really small lines to to. Cut. Well, I'm just looking at this. You got some from the side, and then you got a couple that you did from the bottom. That's interesting as well. You know, when you're looking up in a tree, not all of them are laying sideways. Sometimes you're looking at the bottom of a mm -hmm. acorn. Acre, yeah. It's hard to uh, establish the flow pattern with, with oak leaves, also, for me. They lay a lot more flat than the acanthus type of flowers. Right. Or the leaves. Right. Did you see the sticker my daughter gave me this morning? Look. Oh, Cinderella. Yeah. Allie needs to make another uh, Another appearance on here. She it's does. been a while. She does. She's pretty shy. Little Allie is a, she is a star. Speaking of which, I ordinarily don't do this. But the young man that I take in one of my carving classes uh -huh. called me, and he wants to. He he's doing some sort of a project in high school. Oh, I think I read that over there yeah. on your desk. He's a he goes needs, to a local high school here. Yeah, and he needs to shadow shadow someone for a few hours one day in in the field that he's interested in, I guess. Mm -hmm. so, so he wants to shadow me, and I think I have a date that that we set up. It's on a Friday. I think it's two or three weeks from now. But, oh, are you uh, going to bring him into a live yeah, video with you? Yeah, because I'm going to have him do it on Friday morning. And he's going to be involved in one of these videos. You can see what real leather crafting is about. Yeah. Live on yeah. YouTube across the world. Live on Twitch across the world. He could shoot it out to his high school. Maybe everybody can turn it on their, yeah. turn it on their TVs and think everybody can watch him be a star. Right. He's a pretty shy young man. I don't know if he would do that or not. Chucky D and Junior. This <laughs> leaf. <laughs> I'm pretty darn perfect, but I'm not completely perfect. Yeah. <laughs> we let a little bit slide here and there. Okay. I just about got this little part bevelled. What ounce maul are you using there? Uh, this is a 15 ounce maul. One, 
Ed Labar made a yep. while back. Okay. About three years ago, if I remember right. I saw him I saw him the other day on uh, on Facebook. There's a leather leather patterns group or something like that. He started making more of them uh, to sell. Yeah, yeah, he does. That's one of his uh, main businesses. Yeah. Terry oh. Beeson says he got it. He has a question. All right. I'm making some frames from Veg Tan that I will bond to hair on. What do you think would be the best method to bond? The veg tan is eight to nine ounce. Well, if you're bonding, trying to bond the actual hair side, that's going to be rough. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, about all you can do is clip off as much of the hair as you can on the underside and then use a contact cement. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you just got to be careful. You know, if you're bonding the the hair on on top of a piece of veg tan, that's no problem. You know, yeah. Because you've got a good uh, the the grain of the leather. just use rubber cement. Yeah. Well, or contact, contact cement. cement. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would use regardless. Mm -hmm. Contact cement. Glue on both sides. Let them dry yeah. till tacky. Mm -hmm. To where you put on, put your finger on, and it doesn't pull anything yeah, off when it's not sticky. Anymore. And then stick it and stitch them together. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to the other side. Bevel the other part. Starting with the flower here. This side has a flower and two leaves. The other side just had the two leaves. So when you ha so the other side it didn't have any flowers, it just had leaves. But when you have a flower, do you start beveling with your flower? I do, but flowers? That's, that's just that's just strictly personal preference. There's no particular reason. Nothing hard and fast about it. Right. But that's that's just the routine that I go through. I do my flowers, and then I do my leaves, and then yeah. I do, do the rest. Because the flowers and leaves are generally your your main structures. What kind of swivel knife do you use? Uh, any swivel knife will work as long as you have it sharp. Uh, sharp, like, polished, and... Yeah, polished. Uh, personally, I like a long, slender mm -hmm. swivel knife. You can, you can make tighter turns with it. Uh, this one that I have, I bought it. Kevin had these for sale. 20 years ago, 15 or 20 years mm -hmm. ago, and uh, they were cheap, and I bought it, and I've been using it ever since. It's a great, I wish he had more. I'd buy another dozen of them. Does the length of it matter any? What you got there from, from that first knuckle down to the heel of your hand is... Can we go to the that overhead, Chad? That's about how I like it. Whoop, 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 whoop. That might be just a hair long for Just long you. for me, yeah. Yeah. So we're talking... But, but for me, it's just about right. That's about how I want, right to the heel of my hand. Yeah, you that, got that little crook kind of in your. Yeah, and that way, that way, that's that's your your power is is this forefinger on top of that yoke, and and your fingers and mm -hmm. thumb down here are your steering wheel. So you got you got your motor and your steering wheel. Motor and your steering yeah. wheel. But you know, everyone's different. Every, not everyone might like it that long a swivel knife. Some people might like it longer. Most of them are adjustable, though. Yes, most are adjustable. Yes. But I like the thin ones. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of people like those big... That's a 3 8 barrel there. A lot of people like half inch and 5 8 I've seen some pretty big ones. Yeah. To me, that, that just, they, that's too clumsy. I'm clumsy enough without having a tool that's clumsy. I can still see your spot here on our table. Right here. Oh, it's a dandy. <laughs> left your left your mark for us. Yeah. Is that the clumsy part? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the clumsy part. Okay, Chevy, can I join the chat? 
Chevy guy finally joined the chat? You mean he wasn't on here to begin with? Man, he must have been he must have been doing some crafting himself. Up there in Nebraska, I believe, is where he's at. Maybe. Did you guys hear that? That's because I when I bevel I I bevel those lines out and taper them out too as well as as cut them. All right, we'll be quiet this time. I don't well, know. Well, you don't have to. But I well, would... let's listen. Okay. <laughs> These other jokers in this room don't understand about being quiet very good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Feather one out for us, Denny. Let's listen to it. Okay. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put you on the uh, spot. Let me let me feather this one out. This is the lines. I listen for a little while while I get down to that end. Switch the tube, Chad. And by the way, you can't feather into a line. You have to feather out of it, whether you're cutting it or beveling it. Okay, I'm getting down to where I'm gonna pack this lighter. I don't know if you can see that, but it just kind of goes out to nothing. I can hear it. Yes, good. Good show. This one in here is going to stop abruptly. You won't hear that. Because it's a line that ends at another line, so it's just abrupt. Well, it's going to have a different effect to it in the end. So on these carve rights, are we gonna are we making a list of what tools you use where? Yes, yes. But I hope people realize, and I hope we put this on the carve right somewhere that the list of tools aren't the tools that you have to use. They're the tools that I used when I made these patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have different tools that you would like to use, you know, some facsimile, there's nothing at all wrong with that. Some people may not be very good at a bar grinder. That's right. You know, uh, it's a tougher one to use. Yes. Well, and some people might not have a A eight eighty eight, you know, which is which is a common mat backgrounder that we sell here, you know, but they might have a mat backgrounder that's similar. Hang on a second, sorry, I didn't mean to move you. You know, when you use different tools, you'll get a little different effect from things, and, and that's fine. That's what it's all about. That's where the, you have artistic license when you're doing stuff like this. Make it look how you want, mm -hmm. and how you're able to. I've always been limited myself to the tools that I had. You know, I couldn't use a tool that I didn't have. I don't think anybody can use a tool that they don't have. That's right. Can I slide this around? Hang on a sec. Can I put it over here? Is that mm -hmm. gonna is that gonna bother you? No. Hopefully, it still holds it in place. Is it walking away on you? No, it's okay. Okay. All right, that leaf's done. Now let's go to this other leaf. So you, do you bevel? The bevel side is towards your background. Okay, that's a common problem. I don't know, that's why I asked. Background is an area that the beveler. Let me see. We're on that camera over there. Uh, if I can hold this. There you go, you're close to it. All right. The bevel is this side of your tool here, the back side. The toe of your tool is the part that follows the line. So when you say the bevel, you're talking about the, the part that actually that bevels down, the part that actually stamps down. Yeah. You know, this straight part just follows the line. You aren't beveling anything on this side of that. I was trying to see if I could get it to focus. It didn't want to focus. Can you go to the top one? Let's see if we... Maybe I can hold it and you can do some pointing. Okay. All right. This side here, this is the toe of your tool. 
and this is the heel of your tool. The heel is the part that actually bevels. So when you're talking about bevel that side, the heel goes on the bevel side. He, the, sh the short end, you got a tall end and a short end too, yes. and the heel is your short end. Right. Okay. And the background always bevels. It bevels down. So if you're wondering about which side of a line to bevel on, look at your background and bevel it on the on the background side of that line. Mm -hmm. That's where some of these carve right uh, carve rights come in to help you see what you have already predetermined for the background when you've made the design. Right, and that's the. And that's another thing that I was talking about, you know, the different structures. You know, if you can, instead of looking at a bunch of lines on a pattern, look at the leaf, look at the flower, mm -hmm. look at the chicken necks, and foldovers, whatever you've got, you know. You know, try, try to realize what you're, what you're trying to do. If you can't tell what you're trying to tool, then... You've got a Denny burn. Yeah. Oh. So, there's you can earn... While well, you keep going, I'll talk. You can earn channel points uh -huh. on, on Twitch. We call, them, we call them bones for dog bones. You know how we are with dogs around here. Yep, I do. So we call them bones. And if you earn eno enough, you can play them. You play it out there. And we set up some rewards for earning your channel points. And one of them is a Denny burn. And you're supposed to burn me. <laughs> Not physically burn me. Just emotionally. <laughs> emotionally. When I get burned, am I going to be scarred? No. Uh, <laughs> no, it's like one of those ones where you... Just make fun of me any way you want to, whatever you want to do. That's that's what you know. Like when we talk about the daddy daughter cooking show. Yeah. You know what you. What, so did you have a burn? No. <laughs> did I not, burn you? You did on that. I fried you, didn't you, I? Oh, it was it was scalded. <laughs> Third degree burns. We're sitting here in the video, and Abigail starts laughing, and it was when I was over there at my computer doing it. <laughs> So for this first one, I'll just tell you what the burn was. We were talking about the Daddy Daughter Cooking Show, and I said, and he, and Denny says, I don't know why you call it the Daddy Daughter Cooking Show. I ain't never seen you do any cooking on there. It's just a whole lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> I kept on watching and wanted to see some cooking, but you never did anything. I did. You were telling me about that show, so I was watching you for forty-five minutes. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> that was only the first couple episodes. We were just explaining I, what we were going to I, do. I, you I, needed at least to get to the third episode. Well, I was just too impatient. I guess. Yeah, we ended up doing like 10 episodes. And then the pandemic or the shutdown for uh, Springfield ended, lifted. So instead of working from home, I was working from work. <laughs> Ended your cooking career. Huh? Yeah, well, I mean, I cooked dinner last night. I made french fries last night. I wow. cut them myself, and then I, I did them in an air fryer. Wow. Seems familiar. Springfield leather and or Denny at this point. I've unintentionally acquired bevelers with slightly different checkered patterns. Does it matter much or am i being overly a perfectionist uh, you're using you're a check use, pattern if you're using them together yeah like like i've got two different size bevelers here that i'll use on this same pattern if they were a, if they were a, a different to uh, a different checker pattern you know one was a larger check than mm -hmm. the other yeah you you uh, would be able uh, to see that i was going to try to hold them up here to this one and see what happened okay Okay. How's that working? Not worth a dang. Doesn't want to focus at all. Look how unfocused that is. If you'd like to see the tools, uh, you can get tool number 87102 and 871001.
Thank you. Terry just brought the interior for this wallet in for us. Thank it's just you, a Terry. normal yeah, check baby. check pattern. Yeah. Hey, look at that. What did you make the what did you make this out of? Determinant. Is it the heritage or did you or is it like the chestnut? Just clean colored. Did you spray it? Mm -hmm. What what color did you spray it with? I don't remember. A, a brown <laughs> color. Yeah, yeah. And then you did white thread. This is stylish. I don't That's, know. It is pretty colored. I think that I'm gonna hold it here until Chad switches the camera. I'll use it. Use it. Mahogany antique on this. Yeah, pretty. And, and kind of a lace that match that. Yeah, okay. look good. Thanks, thanks, Terry. You're so, back to the check pattern. If you're using two different check patterns, it's gonna it's gonna make a difference. You will you will see it. Could you take a check pattern tool? since you're a, a tool modifier and sand off sand it off and make it a smooth beveler sure. take it to the take it to the buffing wheel buff the checks off yeah then you can turn it into a smooth one a smooth beveler yeah darcy says that i never stop talking <laughs> That was a Darcy burn. That was a Darcy burn. <laughs> I know. What was the Denny burn? You have to. Denny is too you nice to burn to Tony. Tony. Either Matt's toaster, who I would not want to have any burnt toast. <laughs> so hopefully it's got it. It says Denny's too nice to burn Tony, either physically or emotionally. Oh, no, just me. I would light him on fire in a second. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a Denny burn right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sam. I think it's just the fun of working around here and yeah. getting to have a good time. And it's just like for us right now. You remember when you, I was talking about you when you were gone. You remember when we first, when I started taking over the videos? You remember that? Kind of. <laughs> I, so, I try to forget stuff like that. Right. <laughs> Cause, because you really didn't want to do them. You weren't really wanting to do videos that much we had to talk about it and we went slow and we did a lot of editing and retakes and stuff like that well i thought you had to know something to do this but i'm really no, uh -uh. Like, even someone like me can do this you just got to have gray hair and then people yeah, listen gray hair. that's it that's it okay i'm beveled you guys good and that's another thing some people say do i have to bevel all those lines if you cut a line, you need to bevel it. If you cut it, bevel it. So if you don't like beveling, don't cut any of your lines. Is that's, that what you're telling us? That's right. That's the law. <laughs> that's the law. Seems familiar. Is there a good way when buying online or when forgetting to bring samples for comparisons to make sure that you get sets? Of leather? No, no, no. Of your bevel, of your bevel tools. The two bevel tools that I looked at just a second ago that you had. So you had a fat... Oh, that's a mule's foot. That's not going to be a, even close to a same number. I've actually got three bevelers here. And I think I have all of them, and all the check patterns are the same. But, but uh, two and, of them are Barry Kings, and one of them is an SK tool, which is a Craft Japan tool that we sell here. We don't sell... I take that back. We can get you any Barry King tool that you want, mm -hmm. but we don't stock Barry King tools other than some malls and, and swivel knives. Yeah, they were growing their own feet and walking out the door. Yeah. So we stopped getting them. But your but, two but the SK tools are virtually the same. I'm sure they're they're pretty much duplicated. The the two Barry King ones that you have, and I see well I'll show you something here in a second. Eight seven one zero on both of them and it's got a one and a two and I think there's a third one Those, too that set. Probably but they're all Barry King tools. I don't think he even numbers the tools on, on the tool itself anymore. I'm looking at your tools here, Denny, and they all have this red on them. That's because I bring them in places like this, and I have students, and mm. they tend to disappear. You want to make I sure that track of them. that everybody knows who. Well, that I know which tools are mine. Mm. Which. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to paint all my tools when I come to your class. I'm going to paint them yeah. red like that, so I can get a good Do variety. A good variety. <laughs> These Barry King uh, background or bar, oh, bar grounders. grounders, I don't have them painted. I need to do that. Uh, Just and I they need are, to put watermarks on them so that we can get <laughs> maybe we can lazy your name on there for you. But these are all they all start with four O. Yeah, they're all size forty, 
uh, the bar grounders come, they they denote the number of actual little seeds, beads that they have on them. And so a three bead, a, a six bead. Yeah, I've got a three, a five, and a seven here. I think he makes a nine in this size also, but I, I don't have a nine. Uh, you know, we sell, we sell uh, uh, bar grounders here too. It's just that I've had these Berry Kings and I love the way they work, so that's the ones I use. If you take care of your tools, they... Yeah, they'll last you a lifetime. Okay, I'm going to start with this bar grounder here. Maybe try two on there, Chad. Let me let me zoom this in a little bit. A lot of people don't like to background bar ground or mat background. They say it's too tedious. But to me, this is when you can actually start to see the pattern that you've got going. Hopefully that's good enough for everybody to see as soon as Chad changes it. Changes it. Alright. Seems familiar. Well, not as bad as the one I got hitting the back of my hand. On the end. Burns. Oh, a burn. He got a burn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, is this one you have to sit next to each other? Are you having to sit it and go in a line all the time? Or can you use uh, it tapping it repetitively? Uh, you want to go the same direction with it. Uh, ideally, you don't want to overlap it. But uh, in reality, you have to a lot of times. I'll fan this tool out when I'm, when I'm in a big area. Instead of just going across, a lot of times I'll fan it, you know. Just mm -hmm. like that, and that way, in that respect, it's always gonna. Well, I was gonna look at this piece right here. You can see where you made a fan kind of mark right there, yeah. kind of just faded or fanned across that area. Yeah, and you know, an area like that is bigger than is desirable for mm -hmm. a, for a bar grounder, but uh, that's the way it turned out. Because I'm not perfect, although I claim to be. You keep saying that a lot. Okay, here I'm gonna now I'm in this little area here. I'm gonna fan this tool around like this. More or less you got a pivot point on one end of the tool and just yeah. kind of running a fan across yeah. the other and, way. And that tool, the heel of your tool, which is the part that you're using to fan off of. And this is know, where we're looking at. Yeah. Fanning yeah. it across there. Right. Because you had to sit back in this little gully. Right. It's only a gully if you turn it the other way. Now it's a gully. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have you lots of turns by the time you get out of here. Lots of turns, yeah. I need turns. <laughs> <laughs> what is your preferred backgrounding tool? Bar grounder. Bar, Bar grounder. Far. I would say that it's... A tougher tool uh, than a matte backgrounder. It gives you a completely different effect. Uh, I just like it better. Uh, I started using it now that I can't say I never use a matte ground backgrounder anymore, but very seldom. I mean, it has to be a particular situation before I would use it. Uh, sometimes a uh, for patterns that I make here in the store, I'll use a matte backgrounder. Mm -hmm. But here's one of those big areas that's not desirable, but it's here. Okay, now I'm going to go back to these these spots here. I'm not going to background this whole area, but I am going to background this little corner that I've got created here. I'm going to do the same thing here, just, just a little bit right there, because I'm going to, later, if we have time, I'm going to go over this part of the pattern with a uh, matting tool. Mm -hmm. I think I got that all done. 
Let me check over it for you. Thank you. Yeah. Looks like you got it. And if you remember what I talked about earlier, I like to let it be pretty dry when I do this because I get a better impression. But as soon as I get this, the bar grounding done, I'm going to wet it back up because I'm going to be doing our uh, thumbprint. Okay, now I'm going to have to use this five-seated one because I'm in an area that's too short for a seven. Chevy guy asks, has anybody convinced any to do a guitar or ukulele build yet? As far as making a guitar or a ukulele or the case? I think he needs a case. Because we're talking about cases the other day. I we, have a, we have a guitar case. The I think the pattern is all done. The information is all there to put together in a pattern. We just haven't made it fully digitized yet. Because uh, Elizabeth moved to St. Louis. And that kind of ended that project that she yes, had going on. It did. And abruptly. Yeah. Okay. I guess you could probably do the guitar case, and then when you print it out, don't print it out 100%. Just print it out at three-quarter. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are on your own after this part. <laughs> make, make a pattern really fast. Actually, I made the first guitar case, the one that we brought in here and showed the, the other day. But I didn't make it good enough where we could actually use it for a pattern, so I made the second one. And, uh, what is the uh, most unique thing that you have ever tooled before? I've ever tooled? Mm-hmm. Or the, the, yeah. Probably that guitar case. It was the by far the biggest article that I'd ever tooled. The, I mean, I've, I've tooled saddles over and over again, but there's never a, there's not a part on a saddle as big as that guitar case was. As, yeah. As wide and, and open. Okay. Now I'm going to wet this back up. Do you prefer spritzing like this as opposed to casing? I do. Well, even when you case it. I guess spritzing is still casing, but dipping, I guess, is what I was mean. Oh, yes, by far. By far. And the, the reason is because I'm impatient. And when you when you fully saturate a piece of leather, you have to wait till it starts to dry back out before you can tool so it. So if you dipped it in the water the night before and you let it, it what's going to what's going to change? What changes with it? And letting it dry back out. If you dip it as opposed to spritzing it, do you notice any difference? No, but you have to. If you dip it, you have to to let it dry back out mm -hmm. to to almost the natural color again before you start to tool it. Like right now, ideally, I should let this dry for a little bit more. But we're under a time constraint, so I'm going to do this. What you have to be aware of and careful about is when the leather is real wet like this it gets soft and uh, kind of mushy feeling. I'm using the, this thumbprint now and this is also a Berry King. We have a we sell a, an SKB or SKP 861 I think which I don't know why would that do get the tool before I can tell you. Uh, Latigo, Smith, and Steve M. both have the same question. Oh, a little bit different. So I'll do Steve first. The size of bar grounders were size 40. Yes. And then it's a 5, 7, and 3 seed. Yeah. 
how many seeds are on the lar how many seeds on the larger tool? Seven. Yeah. And like I said before, he he makes a a nine seed in that particular tool too, I believe. But uh, I'd never had much use for the nine uh because I I hopefully don't do that many uh, large areas. And the larger the area, the larger the background area, the bigger seed you're going to use. Yeah, you can you can use that three seed for everything, but it takes forever. <laughs> if you can cover more ground, get a tool to cover more ground. That's right. What's the smallest piece of horse tack that you've ever made? <laughs> I made a halter for a, a hobby horse a while back, <laughs> if I remember right. I should have brought it in with me yeah. this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Put Allie's name on the back of it. She loaded up her bag this morning when she was going to the sitters. She wanted to show me everything that she had, and she had that. She had that halter in there, and she had a blanket. The sitter was supposed to be getting a new um, horse, hobby horse type of thing. I've made all kind of stuff, though. I, when I had my shop over at that Western store here in town, mm -hmm. there was a circus outfit in Willard, and they brought me a headpiece for an elephant I had to make 13 of these things because they had 13 elephants but this headpiece was one. The, the, the face of it was like this big and uh, had a big C on it the Cardin Circus mm -hmm. was the name yep. of the outfit but, and I had to use harness leather for all this, the straps on it I think I used like a Three or four rolls, ten side rolls of harness leather to make <laughs> these things with. But they had me make a bunch of camel halters and stuff too. And Darcy and Matt are in the YouTube chat just letting me have it. Darcy had said that I never stopped talking, and Matt <laughs> said, I have noticed. Matt Stoser said, I have noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Muhammad has a question. What is, I think this is going to be. A multiple answer. What is the perfect thickness to carve and tool? Uh, five to six ounce, because you can get a lot of depth in it, but it's not so heavy that you that you sink your tools in it. Mm -hmm. When you, you like saddle skirting, it's so thick, you know, you, you have to tool deep in it. Yeah, and I know that um, using the Sergei tools, he prefers you to use a thicker piece of leather because the definition of his tools are deeper. Right. Right. What weight leather would you not tool? Uh where would you say that that's too thin? Uh two to three. Two to three ounce is too thin for me. I'm not saying you could emboss it. You could use tool it with a, a modeling spoon maybe. Mm -hmm. But as far as to cut and bevel uh, I think that's too thin. Brandon Shelton over at Shelton Custom Tooling, his dad makes um, some malls. They want to get you one. If you were going to say, I would like a mall like that, what would be your preferred ounce? I know that one's a 15. Uh, I would like a 12 ounce mall. A 12 ounce I think. one? Yeah. I I've never had one, but I think I, think I would like one. 12 ounces. All right, this tool that I just used is a, a flower center liner. It is number PB020-1. And all it does is I beveled around that flower center that I made. Right in there. Yeah. P... Poor boy, PB. Peanut, peanut butter. Peanut butter, zero, two, zero, dash one. And the dash one, I believe there's another size of it. Probably. Yeah. Okay, next tool is going to be a camouflage tool. Uh, 
a C030 or C830 is fine. Any any camouflage tool you have. I'm just I call these stutter lines. I'm just going to add a little texture to these uh, flower petals with it. That also uh, gets rid of some of those lines that I made with that center mm -hmm. liner. But see, it, it just kind of just stutters yeah, out you away can see from that the little flower center. One, two, three marks there on each of them. Okay. Give you some character. Now, uh, V as in very or Victor or Victor seven one five. It's it's a Vayner, and I'm going to take and just go right to the center of the the flower center of this flower, and reaccentuate that that line. Is it a smooth Vayner? Is that one no, a smooth? It's a lined, a lined one. It's not scalloped. It's not scalloped. Lined. It's just lined. I just put those three in the uh, YouTube description. Oh, yeah, I see. So it's still lined, but the scalloped one, it doesn't have the... That's right. The doo-wops in it. Okay. I was going to bring a cedar in here, but I forgot to put a cedar in there, so I'm going to just go back and, and redo that. And now for the center of this flower, I'm just going to cross-hatch it with a swivel knife. When you're doing this cross hatch, you don't want to just make a straight line. You want to make a curved line. Three might get you a shot, Chad. That's all there is to that. And so cross hatching, what would be... Okay. Do you do that because you didn't have this flower Because center? I didn't bring the cedar with me. A small cedar. You just poke it with that modeling spoon there. I could. <laughs> I could. Okay. Keep your suggestions now, to yourself. We're going with a leaf liner, which is a peanut butter 016. And uh, it just goes on each side of this leaf stem. And it bevels also kind of like the flower center liner, mm -hmm. only it goes against the leaf stem. So, uh, Shelton said he'll get you fixed up. Show you guys this redeems the Abigail on camera. Oh. <laughs> Seems familiar says, is mall weight overall or just what's added to the head? Overall. 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 Which is kind of deceiving because uh, a mallet. A 16 ounce mallet mm -hmm. would weigh a bunch. It would be very, very heavy headed. Yeah. But uh, this mall, you know, just the overall weight of the whole thing. Has anybody ever said you were heavy headed? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. I don't know. They might think I am, though. No. You didn't even show us your coffee cup. Oh, yeah. I'm my coffee Liz has her coffee cup. There's Abigail's. American hero. American hero. <laughs> Dolly P. Don't Dolly part. Okay. Now I'm using the the leaf liner. And what use that, it on this one? Yeah. Yeah. And what that leaf liner does, it makes what they call a Sheridan Ridge, which means it goes from from the the uh, flower stem, it kind of domes towards the outside of the leaf. You've already beveled it, but when you go over it with that leaf liner, it lays the shoulder of that bevel back further. Okay, now I'm going to use a scallop veiner, which is a um, P, is P, in P as in Paul, V as in Victor, P, V, zero, one eight. Right. And there again, any scallop veiner will work. But I'm just going to go on each side of the leaf, going over what I just uh, went and what I did with that leaf liner. 
Uh, the black tools that you have here, the black in color, the darker ones, those are Craft Japan? Yes, those are those SK tools. You know, people talk about, uh, they. there was a question last week about uh, what's the difference between an $8 tool and a $50 tool. You know, the, a lot of the difference sometimes is the price. But, uh, you know, those those SK tools that we sell mm -hmm. are very good quality. I've, I've been using some of them for eight years, and they're just as good as they were the, the day I picked them up. They just hold their form better? <laughs> hold their definition? They, yeah, they, they just stamp a little different than a lot of other tools. You know... Uh, in that respect, there's there's only differences in in the style of the tool itself. You know, I mean, I could I could use our uh, our entry level tools on this whole thing and do a pretty good job. Okay. Now let's see here. What's next? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right, Matt's toaster. You never know what's going to happen here on the... You're right about that, buddy. <laughs> you never know. He said he went to go cut some straps, and he comes back, and it's a coffee cup show and tell show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm going to use this. Uh, this is a small mule's foot. It is U851, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it on the flower and leaf stem. And those, I put them pretty close together, and I just fade them out. If you could hear how that uh, sounded. So the harder hits are you getting the full U out of the mule's foot, and as you lift, you're just kind of getting to the point, so it kind of fades out a little bit. Yeah, you want it to fade out into nothing. All right. Sorry, I keep taking it from you. It's okay. You see our mule's foot here. Now I've got a, a larger mule's foot. It's a, a U855. And I'm going to use it where several lines come together. It just to kind of uh, blend those lines so it doesn't look obnoxious. I think I'll put a couple there. A lot of these tools, it doesn't take much to be plenty. Okay, that's all I'm doing with that. Do you use line stops? You can. You can. You can use the, this vayner, this V715, as, as a line stop. In fact, I'll do it right now. Okay. I'll uh, watch you. On, on these uh, leaves. I'll, I'll stop this line right here. like it's just adding kind of more definition, making it more defined. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go back and I'll use the, the vayner on this, too. All right, let's see what we did there. Did you, not, you did, not the vayner, the mule's foot, I mean. Which one did you just do that on? on oh, these. These leaves, yeah. Right here. Oh, come on. And then this over here? Yeah. Oh, both of those? Yeah. Now let me put this mule's foot on there and see what that does for him. Hmm. Let me show him that. Just gives them, makes it look kind of like it's kind of wadded up around that yeah. stop there. Folded. Yeah. Gives it that folded look. Okay. Now, one more thing that uh, 
We don't sell here, but you can use a uh, modeling spoon to do the same thing. This is called a back beveler. <laughs> Look at that. So I think you guys may have started something. Uh-oh. Good or bad? I'm not sure. You tell me. Okay. I have a couple up front that want to come back and watch the live video in-house. I think I have her leather back here, too. So I kind of wondered if maybe you knew who this was. Yep, I do. So are you guys prepared for that? I, I don't have anywhere for them to sit, but they are welcome to come back and if stand they're prepared, with us. If they're prepared, we're prepared. <laughs> tell, them, tell them look out. All right. All right, incoming. We do crazy things back here. <laughs> Rusty knows that, that we do. That's why it's called the Inspiration Station. What else do we call it? What else do we call this? I don't uh, know. What if we call it the Creative Galaxy? <laughs> okay. All right. This is called a back beveler, and it does just exactly that. A line that's already been beveled on one side, mm -hmm. you bevel it back on the other side. It doesn't really bevel. It more or less rounds over that sharp edge that you made. And let's do it on uh, this this leaf right here. Okay. If you see this this edge of this leaf right here, I'll see how high I can hold it there, and we'll get them. A... All right, this one right here. Is yeah. What I'm that, about. So look how that looks. Okay. Now let me go over that that line with this back. Bevel. We'll wait patiently. Oh yeah, it just kind of rounds that sharp edge off there. Yeah. Instead of being flat, it makes that look round or domed over. So, sorry, I'm trying to point. You can see this one's rounded over, and then on uh, this one over here, we're still sharp on our edge. Yeah, but I'm going to fix that right now. Going to fix it right now. All right. And I don't want to back bevel every line on here, because that uh, sometimes that uh, overdoes things. But a few lines, a few of these places I am. And I notice on the oak leaves, there's no real back belling on that at all. Those are pretty sharp. Well, if you look at the, the leaf stem oh, down on, the center, yeah. those are back beveled. Yeah. Oh, and there's a couple that are folded over that you got yeah. back beveled on mm -hmm. there. Yeah. I hear our door a little, opening. A little bit of it goes along. You way. hear the door opening? I hear the door opening. All right. Welcome. Welcome Hello. to the I bun. I want to get out of the way. All right. Hello. We'll shut that door back. Yeah, you guys can come over here to the other side, too. You can walk through the camera. It's not going to hurt anything. They know that you're coming. <laughs> How are you guys? Good. Doing good. We're about finished here. But you got in on the tail end. I watched it all the way. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah. You weren't driving though, were you? No. Oh, good. I'm tired, so. <laughs> <laughs> you got your chauffeur. Well, this is what it looks like on this side of it. Cool. Probably not as big a room as it appears on on camera. Yeah, it looks like we're at the MGM studio. On oh. <laughs> <laughs> Appearing live, Denny, in Las Vegas. What's for lunch today, Denny? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Did you get breakfast of champions this morning? Did you have Wheaties? Wheaties? No. I think I had peanut butter and crackers. Oh. Huh. Get your protein. Yeah. Okay, I've about got all the back beveling that I'm going to do. Do you do that on the border? You leave the, your border sharp. Yeah, I can do it on the border. Well, I wasn't saying you had to. Well, I can. Okay. I will. All right. I'll watch you. And like I said, you can use a uh, modeling spoon to do the same thing. This does a little nicer job, and it's easier to use. Maybe a little more consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now what have I got? I'm ready to do uh, <laughs> our, the, our final. Cuts. These are called uh, finish cuts. Some people call them decorative cuts. One guy I know calls them money cuts. Money cuts. It's the end. After you do this, you get paid. <laughs> Hopefully. All right. I'm gonna start on this flower first. Probably not on this one. We still got to put an interior in that. Otherwise, you're gonna get a flat piece of leather with some tooling oh. on it. 
<laughs> yeah. We all show them how it goes in. All right. Really don't have time to put it in. Well, Matt's toaster. Funny you say that. We don't have time. Matt's toaster said that he an an extended hour since we have visitors. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear my belly rumbling already. I was doing okay till Abigail asked me about. Lunch. Way to go, Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Chevy guy said Denny is itching for lunch. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> He's so talked about buying us lunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think he said he's about eight hours away. So he, was I right? Is he in Nebraska? Yes. Yeah. I think it's about six hours to Omaha. Do we have to come up there for that to happen? Mm. Or can he just send us a check? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he can bring it down. Yeah, there you go. It has to be something that doesn't need to be, or it can be warmed up because it might be cold by the time he gets here. Or I can set up my kitchen studio and have a daddy-daughter cooking show right here. Oh, I forgot one little deal here. Uh oh Little flower bud. Oh, yeah, we talked about it. Sorry, I stole yeah. your mall. Now, you were talking about that. Do you do something different with it? I see you just have your line vayner back. Yeah, I just use a vayner. And just... just kind of make it pop yeah. out a little bit? That's a flower bud. Or it was just a thing. Did you do anything on the outsides of it? No. Or did you just did the inside of it? Just the inside. All right, now back these, to the money cuts. These, yeah, these finish cuts. There again, you don't want to just stop them abruptly. You want to let them fade out. Would feathering be an okay term? Feathering is a great term. I needed you here, Tony. Just for just that. for that. Waited all this time, and I finally come up with something good. <clears throat> Nobody asked for a there Denny burn. There's another one's free of charge. Little item I forgot, and that's this flower stem. I just mm. used this uh, scallop vayner, and I just fanned it across that flower stem. Let's see what we got on our money cuts. You can kind of see them there on the flower petals. And then our, our cuts over here that are feathered out. Carry on. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And these uh, decorative cuts, there's no cut and dried uh, number or way you need to do them. The best thing to do is just to look at a whole bunch of people's work and see what you like the best and try to emulate that. That's my opinion only. <laughs> when I say imitation is the yeah. greatest form of flattery. Tell you what, if if you want to watch someone who's really good at decorative cuts, that Jim Linnell is he's pretty phenomenal, I think. Because he, he's done decorative cuts two or three times, I think. Time or two? Yeah. All Any right. tips for getting better at those decorative ones? Yep. Yeah. Do them a hundred times. If you don't get better by a hundred, the hundredth time. Try 200? Do, yeah. Do another Do Do another hundred times? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to. Go around the outside here, the border, and this flower with this uh, matting to it. Oh, we talked about that, yeah. And it works just like a beveler. It's a little more coarse, and you were asking about the, the uh, different check patterns. The different check patterns. This one's a, a more coarse pattern than, than the actual beveler. So you're just kind of laying the laying the background or the free ground out just a little bit more. Yeah. And if you wanted, you know, this this pattern I did here, you do like a basket weave or some mm -hmm. kind of a geometric pattern in there, and then you know, 
go over with this. You can do a basket weave on it. If I did it, you'd have to do the corners over again. <laughs> but this this uh, matting tool just kind of gives it finished look. It's not so quite so raw. You guys hit the tool. You're gonna have to, otherwise you're gonna be here for a minute. Even after a hundred times, you start missing the tool. See, this is why I can't go another hour. You're starting to get tired on me. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be nap time. Yeah. Almost there. You're on the home stretch. Are you going to spray your outside like you did, like Terry did the inside, or are you just going to do it with a mahogany antique? Well, I'll oil it and then use a mahogany antique on it. And you think it's about dry enough to oil it, or you got to wait some more? Oh, it, yeah, it needs to wait. It's it Because of her, i got to go eat lunch. Yeah, I, my <laughs> tummy's rumbling. Actually, we're done tooling. All right. Look what we've done this week. I'm going to have to put the guitar up here. Now our strap is all cut around. Look what you and I did this this week. We're pretty handy. That's pretty cool. We're pretty handy. I like that for just a, coming up with something. That's not bad. I know somebody was saying, you guys need to put more of your tools on there in the description. Or a more descriptive picture. And I said, well, we got to figure out what we're doing first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to what are you guys doing? I said, it's going to be a surprise. You guys play guitar? Anybody play? No guitar players over there. Man. My kid. <laughs> All right. What, I don't know what we're going to do next week. Clayton is back. Yeah, Liz will be I, back next week. I think Clayton and Liz probably will. I would show you that. the briefcase back, but it's over there under a stack of leather. Yeah. And then on Friday, we were going to do something. Oh, we talked about doing a ranger type of belt with some other details on it. What else? We talked about doing a money belt. You probably forgot about that one. Yeah, I have forgotten about that one. A case for your fly rod. Yeah. we got a lot of things to pick from. If you guys haven't joined us over on Twitch, we're going to stay a little bit longer on Twitch. I'll have to go off of there, and then we'll come back on um, there and hang out for an after party. We got our guests. Welcome them. If you guys are in town close to Springfield and you want to swing by and see what it's about on Springfield Leather and you want to be on a live and be in the audience, we got a little bit of room here. It's not a ton of room, but 11 o'clock on Wednesdays and Fridays. Or we have the live shopping now on Thursdays. That's been pretty fun. That's what that's what they are in town for. They bought a side of embossed. I think they got it for like 50 bucks. I don't think you can get... Not very often you can get eight or nine dollar a square foot for fifty bucks for the That's whole right. side. That's right. We had fun doing it. All right, let's look at our project one more time that you got. Will you hold this guitar for me? And I'll hold this up to the camera. We'll look at everything. Come back away. Maybe I should have had you drive this ship. Yeah. There you got it. But nice any, work. Anyway, by next week, I'll have it finished for you, and you can see the finished product. Maybe on, well, you're not here on Monday or Tuesday. No. Will you let me mahogany it yeah. and put it together? Yeah, if you want to. Maybe it'll be an extra, we'll finish it up on, on a Twitch stream. Yeah. We'll have Chad do it. Chad likes doing leather work. <laughs> He's a pretty awesome painter. He did these pair of shoes. Sometime we're going to have to get him or Stacy in here to paint a pair of shoes. We'll see what happens. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Yeah, thank you. See you next week. Have a great weekend.